Welcome to the Translyzer introductory video. We're going to briefly demonstrate how to install the Translyzer package and how to use it to analyze nanopore data. So the installation procedure begins by downloading the latest release package from the website to your local hard drive. And subsequently extracting the contents of the zip file to a folder. Once this is done, you can open up MATLAB and you need to set the path in such a way that all of the translator files can be found within the MATLAB path. This can be done by going to Set Path, Add with Subfolders, and selecting the location where you just extracted the contents of the zip file. Notice that the subfolders have also been added. This path can then be saved, and we are now ready to use the translator software to analyze our data. We can navigate to the folder containing all the script files and begin with the GUI file, the matlab.m file, which is used to detect translocation events, called GUI underscore detect. We'll open this in the MATLAB editor and run the GUI. This will bring up the graphical user interface for the translator software, which looks like this. Before we begin and analyze a simple lambda translocation experiment, we must sort the data. So I will navigate to a particular directory containing all the data and begin by moving the appropriate files into different folders. So in this particular experiment, consisting of a number of different ABF files, I have the first four files containing IV curves and noise traces. The next three folders Once this has been sorted all into individual folders, we are ready to begin the analysis procedure. One thing that has to be pointed out is that the Translyzer package, when it is cycling through different files and folders, will ignore anything that has a name starting with a tilde character. So this is useful for creating either files or directories that you do not wish to be analyzed. We will then open up the folder in the translator package and begin by looking at the 100 millivolt data set. I will double click the trace file knowing that I have selected the correct file type, in this case axon binary file. This will load the trace into the current trace plot here. So here we can see a typical trace with a number of different translocation events inside. So when, a, when an ABF file is open, the ABF file is, to, is split into different segments, each of a segment size set here, typically three seconds, and the first segment is plotted. A number of different parameters are available. Typically, the data must be low-pass filtered with the Gaussian filter, where frequency is, cutoff frequency is seen here. A voltage must be set. This voltage is subsequently used in all the calculations of the conductance. If you wish to use conductance instead of the current. We also calculate a resistance level for the entire segment. Then the bulk of the detection parameters are within this section of the GUI. They consist of the number of points used to calculate the moving average, the peak detection factor, that is how far away from sigma must an event be in order for it to be counted or detected as, an, as a translocation event. Sigma in this, so the moving average in this case is shown in magenta with sigma 
plus and minus sigma shown in light blue, cyan, and the detection levels are shown in red. In addition to this, we also have, we can set a minimum dwell time and a maximum dwell time. So if events lie outside of these limits, they will not be included in our final detection. Furthermore, once events are detected, we can also select a number of extra points to save on either side of events, typically 100 data points on either side. So, once you feel that these parameters are set correctly, you can click Find Events. Once it has found the events, it will highlight them in a red color. You can zoom into the events within the trace. So I'll zoom into the very first event. Manually, or alternatively, we can use this browser here. So here we can see the first event, second event, and subsequent events. And as you browse through each different event, you will be given a variety of different parameters for each particular event. Typically this is shown in at current level. This can also be plotted using conductance. The baseline can also be set to zero. And we can display a number of extra events on either side. like so. So what typically happens in the analysis procedure is that once you're comfortable with the um, particular parameters, you will go and create a parameter file by clicking create par. This will create a new file called tilde detect.par which contains all of the parameter settings within the GUI. Now, as you'll recall, this particular experiment was done at multiple voltage levels. So what we can do is also navigate to the second voltage level, change our voltage to 50 millivolts, open up the first segment of the first trace file, which in this case does not contain any translocation events. And because we feel pretty confident about the rest of the parameters, create a second detect parameter file with the appropriate voltage. So as you'll see later on, when we click cycle all, the program will jump into every single directory, read the detect.par file, and use that to analyze the contents of the directory. Cycle all essentially will open up a trace file find the events within that trace file, add them to a master trace consisting of only concatenated events, and then open up the next segment in the trace file. And do the same. So it will constantly open up the next segment or the next trace and click and find the events and add them to a concatenated trace file of all the events. This concatenated file can be seen by clicking plot master here. And you can see that this contains the concatenation of all the different events with the start and end points labeled in blue and red respectively. Next, we can also browse through different events within the master trace file using the same browser we had used earlier. So now that we are satisfied with the detection parameters, we can reset the current events in the master trace file, browse to the root directory containing all the folders we wish to analyze, and knowing that each one has its own detect.par file, we Select Auto Save, Cycle Subfolders, and we click the Cycle All button. The program will then jump into the first folder, open up the first trace file in the first segment, and begin detecting events. This can be seen by the 
events within each local segment being added to the total number of events within the active trace file. This concludes the introductory portion of the GUI detect section. Once the analysis is complete, you will notice that GUI detect has created a new folder called tilde transalize dash and then the filtering frequency. Within this folder, there's a file analysis events which can be opened in the next GUI program, GUI events. This can be done by opening the file in my lab, GUI events.m, running it to open up the GUI, and then clicking load events file. We now browse to the analysis events file for the 100 millivolt data and open it. This will begin by loading all of the different events and plotting the scatter plot observed here. The point of GUI events is to be able to sort different populations. So, these particular outliers here can be removed by setting the amplitude to around one point. Let's start with one. And let's remove the long outliers as well. And we begin to see our actual population here with a number of different fragments of noise spikes present in our subpopulations. You can then look at the particular properties for each event in a number of different ways. Looking at the baseline to remove partially clogged cores or events that were detected with impartial clogs, which show up as these very sharp drops in the baseline, except 0.25, and it like they have been removed. We'll next go to the integral histogram. And at any given moment, you can plot the particular integral limits, dwell time limits, and amplitude limits by clicking on the draw button. So, what I want to do now is remove all of these small subpopulations of fragments and noise spikes present here. I'll do that by increasing the lower limit for the integral to 0 0.11 in this case, which corresponds to the end of the distribution in the integral histogram. And now I have a population that looks like this. These particular selection parameters can be saved by clicking Save Salt. And providing a name. And saving. An alternative way to do this is to click Save Clean, which will automatically save a file called clean.salt which contains all of these parameters. If you then go and change these numbers, these salt files or clean files can be reloaded at any time, resetting the parameters back to their previous value. You can see a trace of any particular individual event by double-clicking on it in the list. There are a number of plotting options. By default, it plots the current. You can also plot it in conductance. It can also plot the current using a certain amount of extra points on either side. And there are a number of other plot types here. I've already shown you the baseline. There is a dwell time, translocation time histogram available an amplitude 
histogram, an integral histogram, a current histogram, where you can see all the peaks. You can zoom in and see all of the peaks corresponding to the open core, the first blockade level, second blockade, third and fourth, and so on. For each of these plots, they can be opened up in a separate window by clicking Plot, or all of the plots can be saved at once by clicking on Mass Export. A density plot is also available. In addition to these features, each event can be traced back to a certain file, a certain segment, and a certain time if you wish to determine exactly where this particular event came from. So with that, this concludes the introductory portion of this video tutorial.